guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers again. Good morning. It's Monday around uh, noon. That's right. I woke up around 11. <laughs> hey, I had a busy day yesterday, okay? Anyway, so uh, here's my Cub Cadet. My first Cub Cadet ever. I've never had one before. And of course, I do get a garden tractor version of it with the drive shaft in the center there. See how it bumps up? Very it's supposed to be a very strong tractor if it has that, you know. So the transmission's super heavy duty, you know. Uh, the challenge for this one to get it going is that I'm gonna need a horizontal engine with the pulley in the front for the um, mower deck belts, right? And a coupler that's on the other end of that flywheel for the horizontal engine to turn the drive shaft for the drive system. That's going to be tar hard to find since, I mean, I, I don't see too many of those, you know. Nick took the engine for a go-kart application. He says that if that Kohler Command 12.5 engine that came out of here that has the drive shaft coupler and the double stack pulley in the front, not double stack, regular pulley in the front for the mower deck belts, if it doesn't work for his um, go-kart, we'll make a deal. So uh, today I'm going to put a 8-inch um, inner tube into that one so I, at least I can roll this around because right now it's a pain in the butt to roll that around. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm also going to uh, put two tubes. Well, I'm going to first try to jack that up and take the wheels off because I actually have two wheels that already have tubes in it and they hold air. So I'll just throw that in there instead of wasting my tubes because I don't, you know, that tire is in complete disarray. But anyway, this, this, this John Deere actually looks pretty good. It's a Sabre by John Deere. Same thing as a Scott's by John Deere, you know. It's not that old. You can tell by the front lights. Um, I think over 2,000, you know. To me, that's not very old, okay. I, I'm used to getting like uh, mid 90s stuff. Look at the deck. Not bad. The whole tractor is in decent shape. Decent. Seriously, decent. Not bad at all, really. I mean, you could just tell there's not much surface rust, you know. That's an that, uh, indication right there. Nick, did you steal the knobs? What are you going to do with the knobs? Anyway, uh, this didn't come with a seat. It came with another Craftsman seat that didn't match up the holes. So, uh, this seat I got from uh, Five Speed Ash over in Lindenhurst and uh, through a trade. And I... There's one center hole, but I need to make a bracket for this to go on there. This is probably going to be uh, worked on maybe two tractors later. I've got plenty to do. Plenty to do. So much to do, I hope I don't find anything else free. Anyway, so like I said, after I put a tube in that one, I'm going to work on getting two rear wheels for this so that this can roll. So I can roll this to the backyard too. Let me show you this. See, look at that. The plastics are in good shape. Oh. Muffler's been hacksawed. That'll make things a little more difficult. This at least uh, will take a conventional engine in it without a choke lever. Which means that if I wanted to put an opposed twin in here or a V-twin, I would need the choke lever. So it's fine. I'll put like a regular single cylinder in this one. <coughs> if I can get an engine, of course. Anyway, decent. Then after I, I do these two, I'm going to come over here to the uh, Joe Cardozo one. This one's in really good shape. Got a Briggs V-twin in it. No starter because it fried. They said it sputters when they did get it sort of running. All the top covers are loose and off. They've been in here. There's no battery. There's no ignition switch. I have this one from an old Weed Eater. Uh, weed Eater 1 riding mower. I think it works. 
this does match up. I hope. Um, I was looking under here. The spring held, holding a cable. I'm pretty sure that doesn't belong there. There's more investigating to go with this. I'm just not sure. But I do need to get a battery. Put that switch in. Put a starter on there. Attach the fuel lines. Check out the fuel pump situation. Maybe take off the carburetor and clean it. See if we can get this thing fired up. But first, got to put a tube in there. I'm putting a tube in here because I don't have anything like that. I don't have a wheel with four lugs. Nothing like it. So I have to use that tire. I have to use that rim. And it looks like I can just slip a, an inner tube in there and pump it up. Then I'll roll this to the backyard and do that one. After I do that, I do that one. I've got so much to do, guys. I want to put this 21 horsepower single cylinder uh, engine together, but I'm missing some parts. I did some research on the diagrams. This is called a valve seal, and there's only one, and I believe it's for the intake one. I'll have to double check. I'm missing one of these things. This is the thing that goes on top of the spring. And then these stupid things go there onto the inside. Right? Two of them. Well, I only have three of them. So I need four. I'm missing one. I can't put the other valve on without when I'm missing that. And I'm missing this. And I think this is good. So I just need one of those and one of those. I can go look in my um, flathead box, but I don't know if I could use a flathead one on that, you know? Other than that, um, everything looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know why um, it was smoking so much. The I was looking online, doing some research on the piston, and actually these rings look right. The oil ring is not supposed to protrude like the other two. So, I mean, all I can think of is that... Um, the valves on the head do have some carbon buildup, so it could have leaky valves that would cause it. I don't know if it would cause that much smoke, but... So, you know, a lot of carbon buildup on here. A lot. So that could cause a leaky valve. I think maybe a valve job might be in order. I've never done a valve job. I have the tools for it. Because one day I knew I was probably going to have to do a valve job. And I'll probably grind down all the um, carbon on there and see the situation. Because right now, if you move your hands, there's no pressure, right? But you can feel it. This one will hold well. This one slides a little easier, so I think this one needs a little attention. So this segment of uh, my fix is uh, sponsored by ProPartsDirect.net. Why? Because they sent me exactly what I need for this application. It is a 8 inch inner tube. Blue line goes in there. Valve stem six out this way. So I'm just going to stuff it in there after I remove that um, valve stem. It's hotter than hell today again. And today, since I'm doing overhead shots, I decided to show you guys my custom mowers and blowers sandals or slides or mules, whatever they call them. I don't wear these very often because they're honestly not very comfortable. It costs a lot of money too. $46. It's a scam. Um, Made in China or something like that. China! But uh, it's kind of cool how it, you know, 
has my logo on here printed. I chose the colors and stuff. Whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to get uh, some side cutters and cut that valve off. I'm outside in the blazing sun because, well, this thing is so heavy I can't move it anywhere. So I have to do it here. Until I get this thing done, it can't be moved. It's too heavy. Too heavy, and also my driveway is full of uh, RCA, so it's even harder to roll. It's harder to roll even with good tires. Yuck! Slime. I hate slime. And I don't think it works. What do you think about that? First thing I'm going to do is put the uh, valve stem in. I should take off the cap, right? Hey! Remember when I eventually do get this tire in, right? Or inner tube? Inside has probably 8 to 12 ounces of slime plus the air in it, right? And since there's air in it, when I do inflate... Got my air compressor going. Taking the cap off. I'm going to slowly put some air in it. I'm going to hold on to the valve with my finger or my hand because if it sucks back in and it's inflated, you'll never get it out again. so good. Still have it in my hand. See, air is coming out between here. Tires on the bead. I'm surprised I don't see any slime coming out yet. Should be a decent amount of slime. This tire is good, I'm not going to over inflate it. I'm just going to let some of the air come out, you know? Maybe a little more. That's it, I'm not going to put it anymore. This is harder than a rock. It's great. So, that worked out just perfect, you know? Perfect. Fast, too. I did that in like five minutes awesome so now uh, this Cub Cadet now rolls hopefully and I'm gonna slowly roll it to the backyard and store it for now because it's sitting in front of my driveway here in Huntington Long Island my neighbors frown upon redneck redneck looking operations like this hey I just put the side pods on since I'm parking in the back, at least, uh, so it doesn't look like a pile of bolts and nuts, you know what I mean? Had to do some bendage, get that back into shape. But, uh, you know, it, I know it looks, it looks like hell, right? But honestly, it's all just surface rust. Uh, there's no rot in it, you know, practically none at least. And, uh, you know, just grind that out and give it another coat of paint is all, you know? It'll look much better. Uh, everything else is really there, you know? Now I'm going to uh, try to push this. I'm pretty sure that's not going to fit. We'll see. I just uh, took it off its uh, stand and it holds air just fine. And the transmission release lever is on so I should be able to freely push this. Uh, I'm trying to look for the model number and the manufacturer sticker. Can't find it anywhere. But this is an HDS. 2135 uh, from those numbers I'm thinking 21 horsepower 35 wide cut but uh, the engine that was on here was a Kohler command 12.5 horizontal so I'm a little confused as the 21 uh, anyway we'll see I just measured the deck it is indeed 35 inches uh, that should be no problem getting it through between the cars hey
I just cleared out my yard. How did this happen again? Two days. I feel so overwhelmed. So I managed to move the uh, tractor over to the uh, front part of the garage because uh, it's just hotter than hell, you know, I was to pass out. So uh, I decided to jack this up and this part of it is already off the beat, so this would be the easiest one to take off. The other one is still on the beat, sometimes it could be a pain in the yum yum for uh, taking that off, you know, breaking the bead and stuff. I don't think it'll be that tough, but it could be, you know, you just never know. And that's with everything, you know, something that you think would take three seconds ends up taking you two hours to do. Like I once said, uh, hey, I'm going to do the brakes, you know, on my Mercedes. And my wife says, uh, how long is that going to take? I says, brake pads on a Mercedes in the rear? Pfft, it's easy, man, like 45 minutes. Of course, once I jacked it up, I didn't have the tool, that special torque size that you need to take off the two nuts to take the caliper off, or to loosen it to get the thing off. It ended up taking me like three hours, because I had to go somewhere to go get that damn special thing, you know? You just never know sometimes, you know? Anywho, uh, this doesn't seem to be uh, turning. And neutral. Okay. You know the keyways are in here. We're just going to do exactly what we just did before. Should be easy. Uh, this one doesn't have slime in it, so it could, could be tougher because rubber and metal, they just grip, you know? I almost want to stick some slime in here and make it easier. It's kind of like having oil in there to help you out. Help me out, bro! So yeah, you guys have any ideas, not ideas, ideas, about how, uh, what type of engine I should try to find and whether or not the drive shaft coupler is easy to find to put on the top part of that cup to the flywheel. And that maybe I was thinking about, um, you ready for this? You're going to think I'm a nut, but some of you guys already do think I'm a nut. What do you think about me putting that Jake? I, I have that Jacobson snowblower that I don't want. I wish Scott Keller would come down and buy it for me again. But uh, he already has one, so I don't think he wants it. Um, I was thinking about, because I need a horizontal engine, right? Well, snowblowers are mostly all horizontal engines. So I was thinking about, I mean, that Jacobson engine is like, you know, strong, even though it's only like six horsepower or something like that. It's a uh, Tecumseh, six horsepower, and, you know, it's, it's a beast, you know? Maybe I'll put a snowblower engine on here. It's horizontal. It'll at least be able to drive one thing, you know, whether it, obviously the drive is the most important to the uh, mower system. I wonder how hard it would be to adapt, you know, whether or not the crankshaft would even fit. But there are adapters that you can put on the crankshaft too, so. Yep, that slime definitely made it a lot easier to do. This is uh, kind of tough. Just got to stick your fingers in there, it's all. The more you stuff in, the easier it is. Getting it. There we go. See how that works, folks? Pretty easy. I just want 
I just want this lip to come on top of this bunch of rubber because I don't want it to pinch the tube. And if you pinch the tube, you know, mess up the inner tube, you know? And sometimes when you stick a screwdriver in there to try to help you get it in there, the screwdriver touches and snaps it, or pinches it. But I'm going to try, because I don't want that thing to pinch. So I'm just going to feel my fingers here to nothing but the rubber lip of the tire and not touching the... Uh, want it over there, you know? That's good. That's good. I think that's good. Stay. to suck in. The valve wants to get pulled in. fixed that was fast too that was like eight minutes you know the reason why this one's busted is because this has been sitting flat for a long time the dry rot cracked it that crack is where the leak is coming from this big crack right here but you're not driving this thing on the highway you know what i'm saying you're not driving this on the highway so you're going like maximum 10 15 miles an hour if you're lucky you know what i'm saying uh it's probably like seven miles an hour really slow so all you need for a lawn tractor tire is for it to be inflated off the ground. That's all you really need, you know what I'm saying? So uh, an inner tube is the best way to do it. I mean, you guys know I've done videos on slime, which sucks. Uh, fix a flat actually works for some very extremely small, slow leaks. I've, I've used it before and it's held very well. Uh, I did an episode where I actually put the foam filler in it, right? And that, while it does kind of work, it fills the tire with foam, over time, that foam turns into like sawdust and sand and you have like flat spots and stuff. So when you're driving, you're going to do, 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 do. So, uh, I think the, um, the inner tubes are the best way to do it. You know, you know, this tire is rubbing on the deck. That's not normal. Hey. Anyway, so I'm gonna, that's, that's one down, one more to go, man. That's, That'll be a new record. That'll be three inner tubes into three rear tires in one day without even taking the tire off, without even taking the wheel off the axle. What do you think about that? Uh, I'm worried about that side because I have to break the bead on that. And breaking the bead sometimes sucks. Uh, once again, these tubes came from my buddies over at ProPartsDirect.net, the lawn care professional's choice for parts. Of course, now I've used up all my inner tubes. Can you guys send me some more? 
Okay, I'm on the other side now to do this one. As you can see, this also has that same problem. It's uh, been sitting on it, sitting flat for so long. If you just look at that uh, that crack here, that's right on the line where it's been sitting. Long time. Look at that. This tire's crap, man. Trashed. Remember what I said? I said I was gonna take this tire off and put another one on there, but. Uh, It's easier to do this, or should I just try to take this tire off? You know what? I'll do that. I'm gonna go to the backyard and find one that's already got a tube in it that's already inflated, sitting in my shed, just wasting away. And then I could save that last uh, inner tube I got from Pro Clutch Direct for another application some other time when I probably really, really, really need it, you know. Because I didn't really even see whether or not this wheel came off. If I could get the wheel off and replace it with another one that's already inflated, save me the trouble of trying to break this bead, which probably wouldn't be too hard. Let's just see. Oh my god, it's so easy to break the bead. Should I just put the inner tube in here? You know what? It may not match the tire, so... Tread's still pretty good on this too. So check it out, guys. Just take this a big screwdriver, flathead, right? Stick it here. Boom! That was like one of the easiest uh, beat breaking I've ever done. That was easy, really easy. So yeah, so that made the decision easier for me. Is that I'm just going to um, put another tube in here. So that'll be a record. Three tubes in a day. You know what? It's got some kind of slime in there. It's not slime, but it's something else. I don't know what it is. It obviously doesn't work either, does it? <laughs> Here we go. This is my last 8-inch straight valve inner tube from Oregon. 71-104. Again, my friends at ProPartsDirect.net. The Lawn Care Professional's Choice for Parts sent it to me for this video. Well, in other videos. Ed, if you're watching, I need more 8-inch inner tubes, bro. And while you're sending it to me, send me that damn banner you said you were going to get me. Instead of me just putting my hat there, uh, your hat all there all the time for product placement. Know what I mean, man? I'm trying to help you out. You help me out, I'm trying to help you out. But you gotta give me the resources. <laughs> gotta give me the resources to help you out. Help me help you, right? First of all, there's it's tough finding people willing to say, help me help you. By the way, guys, uh, Pro Parts Direct also sponsors guys like um, uh, Double Wide Six, who I, I like that guy too. He's a nice guy. He looks just, just seems like a nice guy. You know what I mean? Double White Six, I, I've watched a lot of his videos. He's very good. Um, and also Pro Parts Direct. Uh, first time I ever heard of Pro Parts Direct was on uh, watching Terrell. Terrell fixes all. Terrell plugs you guys pretty good, too. Terrell has a lot more subscribers than I do. For now. You know, I will tell you this, though. Okay? Uh, just while I'm stuffing this in, I'll tell you what, I, what I'm feeling here. Um, Terrell... He deserves a lot more subscribers than he has. Uh, I guess I kind of feel like I, I do too. I mean, I have videos every day. Those guys do it once a week, maybe, you know, or maybe once every two weeks sometimes, you know, because they're busy. I don't, my, my only real job is, I mean, it's not really a job, but my other, my real job is uh, marketing director for a chain of restaurants. 
So I do things mostly remotely. You know, I don't have to be at the restaurant. Sometimes I do, but not, not often. So I have all the time in the world to do all this stuff. You know what I mean? Which is great. Carol and them, they have their job is you know lawnmower repair. You know, small engine repair. Because they don't have time to do this. I mean, since they're doing it anyway, they might as well just put a camera on there, right? But uh, yeah, so Carol only has like ninety thousand subscribers. I mean, dude should have a lot more than that. Look at that goof, uh, Pug One. Yes, I know, I watch it too, only because I'm just intrigued by, you know, how he scraps and stuff. Because I'm, I'm kind of like that, you know what I mean? I take the stuff for free. He just does cars. I just do tractors, you know? But uh, his life is just kind of interesting because I, I want to see how that part of the world lives, you know? Canada, eh? And, you know, he's, you know, people call him a goof and stuff, and, you know, most of the time he probably is, but he seems like a nice guy to me. To me, he seems like a nice guy. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind being friends with the, with the guy. Anyway, that dude, he's got like 290,000 subscribers. That's an insane amount of subscribers, man. He makes a lot of money from that, I'm sure. Um, another guy that um, deservingly has a lot of subscribers is uh, Donnie Boy 73 That dude's got like 300-something thousand subscribers. But honestly, Tarrell, being at only 90, I think Tarrell should have more than that. Don't you guys think? I think so. Anyway, that was easy, man. Oops. Product placement. Look at that. And, and this one is such where the lip is over the valve. That's awesome. So I'm just going to put air in it. Man, that was, that was easy. Is it three easiest... Three easiest inner tubes I put in. Without taking it off the tire. guys can try all you want, waste your money on slime, fix a flat, tire jet, tight seal, whatever, right? Yes, tight seal eventually did not work either. And as such, I'm sure Gunk and Stable and those other sponsors that I had has dropped me because, oh my God, punish me for being honest about a product, you know? Some people said to me, hey Henry, you shouldn't be sponsored by, by people because you're under some pressure to um, plug their stuff in a positive way. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. If you sponsor me, like Gunk and Stable had sent me product to try, I try it, I review it. If it sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks. So I'm pretty sure that uh, Tight Seal, Gunk, and Stable have already uh, dropped me as sponsors because I haven't heard from them in like nine months. I write them emails, they don't write back. So they've, they've dropped me as a sponsor, but until I hear otherwise, they're still sponsoring, even though they don't send me shit, you know? Um, Lucas Oil, I plug them the most, because guess what? 100% of the products they send me works, works well, premium product. And you know what? Honestly, Pro Parts Direct, man. You guys have been money for me. Seriously, you guys help me out. I plug you every chance I use your products. There are kids out there that uh, email me and say, Hey, Henry, can you shout me out? I go, shout you out for what? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, then why am I shouting you out then? Oh, uh, okay, sorry. Shout you out. You got like one post, zero subscribers, zero people that follow you. You don't have anything on your Instagram. Shout you out so other people can come look at your nothing? Doesn't make any sense, does it? So please stop asking me to shout you out. Go ask go ask Tarot to shout you out. See if he will. See if he will. This is 
great. Thank you guys for following me along. Just uh, This is just to show you. Oh, especially my new friend Nick. Nick over in Medford, who I got this tractor from. Um, he actually watched one of my videos on how I put the inner tube into a Husqvarna or something like that. And he says, ah, oh, that really easy. So he was a, uh, he's a slime guy, you know what I mean? And I says, dude, just put inner tubes in there, man. They're like uh, eight bucks an inner tube, you know? And uh, if you go to propartsdirect.net, right? The Lawn Care Professional's Choice for Parts. Tell them Henry at Mowers and Blowers sent you, and you'd like to order some parts. They'll give you a discount. Okie dokie. Talk to my friend Ed over at Pro Parts Direct. These guys have a brick and mortar store too in New Hampshire. That's three inner tubes in one day, fellers, and uh, it only took me maximum 10 minutes each. Fantastic. These things are good for a long time. I'm going to now uh, take it off the jacks and roll this to the backyard too. I'm going to put this thing back on because it's such good condition I can't, you know, not put it back on. This uh, cover protects the um, transaxle of any uh, dust and debris and keeps the grease inside. Anyway, so now I'm going to uh, take this off the jacks and push it towards the rear. <laughs> push it towards the rear. I don't know where I come up with this stuff. Uh, so this is the, like I said, this is the, the seat that I got from uh, Five Speed Ash. Hey, shout out to Five Speed Ash and Lindenhurst for uh, this, the trade on the seat. I don't really need it now, but this, this actually may fit. Uh, the other one didn't fit, the one that came with this. It was like from somewhere else. But anyway, um, this has one single bolt here, but it doesn't have anywhere to, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have a hole. It has this big area here, so I'm going to get like a metal clamp, a metal bar or something with a hole in it. Put a washer in there and just like tighten it up and it'll be on there, you know? Don't overthink things. But um, anyhow, so uh, it was funny because uh, when I went inside to get a drink, right, my daughter was... Um, she was sweeping the new driveway, right? And I says, hey, what are you doing? She's sweeping the driveway, right? And so I said, uh, work smarter, not harder. And so I introduced her to uh, leaf blower. So that's uh, Walter's uh, Husqvarna. That's Husqvarna, not Huskaverna, Huskverna. Leaf blower that I fixed for him. It's the 125B. I started it up for her and she was like, zipping around the, the driveway and cleaning it and blowing it and blowing the walkway and she's like I taught her how to start it and shut it off and use it so now she's experienced in her first gas small engine so this machine um, is definitely more than 35 inches the deck it's probably a, a 42 and um, I don't know if this will fit in between the two uh, cars. I might have to. I might end up having to move the cars, man. Damn! Taking it off the jacks now. Yay! Holds air. Alright. So today's lesson was how to put an inner tube. Or in my case, three inner tubes in three rear tires, eight-inch tires. Let's see what the food was. Oh, sorry. It's not free roll. This is going to be a problem. It's not. It's uh, locked. So uh, it's not good. I. I have to figure it out and see why it doesn't free roll. So, I can't figure out why it uh, doesn't roll. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this cap back off again. And uh, I'm going to take the keyway out. If the wheel comes off. The wheel comes off. I can take the keyway out. And then <clears throat> it won't be posi traction anymore. So... Both wheels should spin. I don't have to take out both. I just got to take out one. The uh, E-clamp. Please come off. Oh, yeah. The person who put this on 
put good anti-seize on there so that it won't seize, it won't rust. This is the keyway. Of course, it's always covered in anti-seize or grease. Remind me, fellas, when I start working on this, right, and it doesn't drive, tell me on the comments, hey, Henry, remember you took the keyway out. I says, oh, yeah, thanks. I'm going to put this in an ashtray that's on my blue shelf in my garage. Okay, so now one of the keyways is gone, so this should freely move. But while I'm down here, Let's find out why it doesn't move. Huh. There's a lever here. Oh, that's just the uh, lever for that. I don't know where the disengages. You know what? I'll figure it out when uh, I work on this. <laughs> when I find an engine for this damn thing. Hey, Pete, if you have an extra engine for me, man. If any of my boys in Long Island has an extra engine that they're not using that I could use in one of my thousands of tractors that I don't have engines for, right? Let me know, man. You guys want to trade? Let's trade, man. I've got, I've got like uh, seven dual-stage snowblowers. I know. I could sell them for two, three, four hundred dollars in the winter. As if Long Island ever gets snow again. But I'd be willing to trade my boys for an engine. I'd rather get these tractors going than snowblowers right now. So if you guys want a snowblower to sell or use or whatever you want to do, let me know. Oh, and I've got that ground blower. I've got a Briggs & Stratton uh, 8 horsepower ground blower that I just got, courtesy of Frank the UPS guy. And you see, that's a shout out because Frank helps me out, you know what I'm saying? Frank is in a lot of my videos. Anyhow, uh, if you guys want to trade, you got an engine sitting around, whatever, I don't care if it's pull start or whatever, just as long as it powers one of these damn tractors. Well, you know, man, I'll trade you a snow blower, a ground blower. Uh, I've got tons of push mowers too, if you want. I'm gonna try to m see if this moves now. All right, let's drop the jack and see if my theory pays off see whether or not it, um, does it roll forward? Let's see. Yeah! See you guys? You take the keyway out of the transaxle, and it will now roll. This is for Sam Jefferson, who reminded me to that I didn't put on the hose clamp to the thing. I uh, went, I went through everything after I stopped filming. So just wanted to show you, it's all good. I brought my pliers just in case I didn't. <laughs> and also, he suggested that I should uh, paint my muffler cover because it's kind of rusty over there on the top, you know. And uh, also, Chris's small engines also uh, mentioned it. So you know what? If more than one person mentions it, there might be some validity to the uh, logic. And uh, by the way, Chris the Small Engines, welcome back. You've been gone for a while. Hey! I might have to go to Home Depot again because uh, this is like a quarter left. Uh-oh. What am I going to do if it's only a quarter left? Wow, this does look way better. <laughs> Looks like it's new! I'm not worried about overspray, because this doesn't overspray. Nice! Damn. Sides, too. <laughs> Why not, man? Why not? Bet. 
<laughs> what the hell? Just a slight coat, just to cover up the uh, scratches and the rust. Ooh, look at over here. Ah, mask nothing. It's just a lawnmower. Eh? Just the outside part right there. Yeah. Yeah. Henry, you just sprayed some on your artificial turf. Well, trust me, I don't think this stuff will stay much, so uh, probably just uh, wash off with erosion. Hey. This particular model is like my Murray. There ain't no grease fittings on the uh, pivot points for the uh, steering. But I uh, lithium greased it, WD-40 and everything. This thing runs well, man. Runs good. Oi. Oi. Arg. Oi. Je mal à la tête. Oh, right, that's French. Um... Me duele la cerveza. So I was just walking my dog. You guys know my dog, Boba. And I saw this thing in somebody's garbage. So I said, man, that kind of looks like an ATV luggage carrier for the back, you know? I don't actually know what it is. But I'll tell you what, man. It's giving me some ideas. Not ideas. Ideas. Hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Maybe I'll put this on my uh, Black Beauty. What do you think? Yeah. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day. Hey guys, Boba and I want to thank you for all the support of Mowers and Blowers. If you'd like, Make a short video clip like these, and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. Henry, next time on blow, blow, uh, Blowers and... See, you just screwed that all up. I take two. Henry, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Great yeah. Time.